with you tonight. Uh, you can catch us right now on Facebook. Later on, we'll be on YouTube. Uh, but we are so happy to be able to come and be in your home tonight and share the word of the Lord. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this day. For this is the day that you have made. We shall rejoice Amen. and be glad in it. We love you and we thank you. In your precious holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. We had some technical difficulties earlier. I'm just making sure I got the right ear button in my ear. All right. We're going to uh, sing a song from a little, little while back, not too far back. This is a, an Israel song from way back. Ready? Go. One. Yeah. 
Thank you, Lord Jesus. We praise your holy name tonight, Lord God. Hallelujah. If you're watching from home right now, just lift your hand. And just ask him, Lord, right now, through this time right now, God, increase our faith like never before. Increase our faith like never before. This past Sunday, we celebrated Mother's Day. Uh, we're having some technical difficulty tonight. It's a little difficult to hear. And we've got some, some stuff going on in our ears, too. But we're going to get through this the best we can. So I'm going to lean on this house speaker here. And uh, we're going to, I want to say something tonight about moms that I didn't get a chance to say Sunday morning. Um, first of all, I thank God for my mother, and I thank God for my mother-in-law that's prayed for me. I thank God for my wife and the mother that she is. I thank God for all of our mothers uh, here in the church. But I was thinking the other day, my dad, uh, he's been battling um, uh, cirrhosis of the liver for over nine years now. Um, he, it, it last few years, it's gotten kind of tough with ammonia levels. And what we've learned is when ammonia gets too high, a person literally starts to lose their mind. And um, you don't know what to do with them. Well, now uh, it's to the point that my mom knows the medication to help get his system back right. And he had an episode recently where we would have normally gone to the hospital. But we're not too keen on going to hospitals right now. Not too keen on going to all the way to Chapel Hill where his uh, primary physician is. And so mama just kept uh, giving him the medicine and within a couple of days, he was back to normal. And I just thank God that she was able to do what normally in, in the past we had to go to the hospital and do. And uh, it's just a stress, it would be a stressful time to just try to go to Chapel Hill and stay a few days and all that. So I just want to tell my mama tonight, because I know she's always watching and listening. Mama, I am so thankful for how you take care of our daddy. And uh, you do such a good job, and we don't tell you enough. We love you, and we thank God for you. Amen.
She's going to announce them live on the air here in a moment, and we're going to have Brother Eddie come up and pray over these prayer requests, and then we're going to get ready to end this broadcast tonight with another water baptism. Amen? All right, so let's get ready for the Word tonight. tonight to 2 Kings chapter 4, 2 Kings chapter 4. Before we begin real quick, um, we are going to postpone our normal, here I'm going to throw that up there, our uh, live and unplugged broadcast for tomorrow night. We've had some things come up, we're not going to be able to do it, I apologize for that, but we're going to make it up to you next Thursday, and I tell you what we'll do to make it up to you. We'll sing a lot more songs than we normally do. So the broadcast will be a little longer than it normally is. Uh, so we won't have that tomorrow night, okay? Uh, but we will have it next week. Also, we'll be back in the parking lot this Sunday at 10 a.m. for uh, what we used to call drive-in church. Some of the sanctions have lifted. Now we're calling it tailgate church. And what's going to be different about this this week uh, for tailgate church we're going to not have everybody in the cars pull up so close. We're actually going to have some seating out there where you can actually get out of your car and come sit down in the seat. If you brought your lawn chair, and, I'm going to go ahead and tell you the chairs we're going to have are metal chairs. Um, if you don't want to sit in a metal chair, that's fine. Bring your lawn chair, but we're going to space everybody out except families, immediate families can sit together. But if, uh, we're believing for a, a really pretty day. I believe the weather's supposed yeah. to be good. And so with that said, uh, we're going to provide seating up front. So I did have somebody tell me the other day we were running behind. And so we decided not to come because we knew if we did, we'd be all the way at the back of the parking lot. Well, that's not the case anymore. Uh, we don't want you to get here late. But at the same time, if you're running a little behind, if you're not able to get here real early, don't let that stop you. Bring your lawn chair. They may park you at the back, but you can get out of your car and you can bring your lawn chair or you can sit in one of the, the metal chairs that we provide and uh, so we're doing everything we can to make it uh, as enjoyable as possible. I know I said Sunday that we would uh, hopefully be having some reopening information for you. At this time, we do not have any reopening information to report right now. Uh, we're going to, right now, we're on, on course to keep doing tailgate church on Sunday and online only during the midweek. Uh, we may try something uh, next month where we actually start to open up on Wednesday nights uh, if the 50% capacity rule is still in place. 
Uh, the governor is putting a 50% capacity rule after the 22nd of this month, and we feel like that would be a little too hard for our church uh, because we don't ever want to run the risk of turning anyone away from the house of God. And that could very well be the case if we try to do 50% capacity on a Sunday morning. But we think we can do it on a Wednesday night. So uh, we may uh, toss around that idea for next month. But for this month, just to make it easy, make it easy to remember, we're going to do like we've been doing. A tailgate church on Sunday morning in the parking lot, but now you can get out of your car. Uh, still want to practice social distancing, but you can get out and sit in a lawn chair and we'll space them out. Uh, and then we'll be online only uh, on Wednesday night. But we may next month start opening up the Wednesday nights to an audience here that wants to come and sit in. But we will let you know as soon as that changes. Uh, also, you can still give online. You can go to our website, cfcsandycross.com. Uh, you can download our ShareFaith app. The download instructions for Android and Apple are on our Facebook page under Christian Fellowship Church as well as on our uh, web, uh, website, cfcsandycross.com. We're on Instagram too under CFC All About Him. And I want to tell you, we had in, a, in the middle of a pandemic and a global crisis, we had a record online giving, the highest it's ever been in the history of the church. You cannot outgive God and His people. Amen. And so I am just ecstatic about what God is doing for His people, what He's doing for His church in the midst of a time where we're not even able to meet in person in the house. Amen. And so I'm just so thankful for our CFC family. We have visitors every week uh, in the drive-in church service. So God is blessing. Amen. And so let's remember to thank Him for the blessings during this time. All right, let's get into the Word tonight. Again, uh, 2 Kings chapter 4. 2 Kings chapter 4. We're in a series called An Uncomfortable Revival. Somebody out here is saying, I got a couple of people in here. Go ahead and say an uncomfortable. Uncomfortable revival. Uncomfortable revival. In this series, we are seeing that no matter what the situation or the circumstance may be, uh, what the situation or circumstance may be, God can bring the power of revival to the life of a blood-bought believer. Whether they're in a mountaintop moment or a valley season, even in darkness, despair, pain, and tragedy, our God can revive, rejuvenate, refresh and rekindle his fire in his beloved people. Amen. So no matter the transition, no matter the drastic change, or what may be perceived as uncommon or even inconvenient, we can have revival even if it's uncomfortable. Amen? Amen. Now to recap from uh, this past Sunday, we celebrated Mother's Day and we spoke on the plight of Mary, Jesus' mother, and how she certainly endured uh, an uncomfortable time in being pregnant and yet had not known a man. Okay? She had never been with a man. She was a virgin and yet she was pregnant with a baby. This was dangerous for her because she'd been promised to Joseph, a man named Joseph, a carpenter, in an upcoming marriage. But God sent an angel to support her calling and the calling of Joseph. Meaning God didn't expect her to just go tell Joseph, look, I have not cheated on you. And I know we have not had our honeymoon yet, but I'm already pregnant. He did not expect her to go and try to convince Joseph on her own. He sent an angel to confirm and convince Joseph, which we said, hey, God's always got your back. He's not going to put you in anything and leave you hanging and leave you out there to dry. He's always got your back. Amen. Amen. Then she had to look on as the religious leaders fast forward 30 some years. She had to look on 33 years as the religious leaders handed Jesus over to Rome to be killed. She had to watch all that. This was definitely an excruciatingly painful time for her, but it would save mankind from eternal death. It was uncomfortable, but it was to revive, revive man from eternal death. And we're thankful, we're thankful for what she did, how she obeyed God. Hallelujah. And how she was there for Jesus at his birth and at his death. Amen. Father, we just praise you for your word tonight. Help us to communicate this word in even greater measure. In your matchless name we pray. Amen. Amen. 
So this past Sunday, we spoke on the plight of Mary. And to stay in this Mother's Day themed vein, I have another biblical mother that endured somewhat of an uncomfortable revival, so to speak. And literally she did. If you look in 2 Kings chapter 4, and where we are in this portion of Scripture is during the thriving, double portion anointed ministry of Elisha. He and his assistant Gehazi go and stay at the home of a couple who is quite hospitable. A couple whose name, actual names we are never told, but we only know the wife as the Shunammite woman who prepared a room in their home for the man of God for whenever he may need it. You see, God knows how thankful Elisha is to this family. And so he leads him to speak a prophetic blessing of a child to her because she had been barren, unable to have a child. Yet he tells her at her age, you will have a child at this time next year. She even said, man of God, don't, 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 you know, don't mess with me like that. I, I don't get my hopes up. But nevertheless, she had a baby at that time the next year. And she, in fact, has the child and he grows old enough to work with his father. And kids those days, they started working mighty early. So I don't know if he was 9, 10, 11, 12 years old. But he's old enough to work with his father and small enough to sit in his mama's lap later on. So round about those ages, we, th we think. And so he's working with his father and one day he suffers from a severe headache that we could possibly perceived from scripture was a brain aneurysm that exploded in his head and it says that he's in severe pain he says my head my head his father takes him to his mother and we'll pick up the story right there in verse 20 it says when he the boy's father had taken him and brought him to his mother he sat on her knees till noon and then he died this boy that had been promised to her this boy that was a miracle child because she had been barren for so long, never able to have children, till the man of God, whom she prepared a place for, prophetically spoke a blessing over her life and said, by this time next year, you'll have a child. Now it goes somewhat of a decade later, and now she's holding the promise of God in her hands. She's holding the answer to her prayers in her arms, but now it's lifeless. Now it's dead. There's a lot of people out there tonight. You're holding on to promises. You're holding on to things that may feel like it's dead. That marriage may feel like it's dead. That career may feel like it's dead. That dream may feel like it's dead. But you need to hold on and still say it is well with my soul. You need to hold on and still know that you're on the winning side. She held the promise, the lifeless promise in her arms. And in verse 21, it says that she went up and laid him on the bed of the man of God, shut the door upon him and went out. She didn't lay him on her bed. She didn't lay him on the couch. She didn't lay him out in the yard. She went into the room that she had prepared for the man of God. She respected and realized and recognized the powerful anointing on the man of God. He has been staying there for years. When he would come through town, she would, her and her husband would allow him to lodge in that room. So she knows he had been talking to God in that room. She knows he had laid his head down in that room and prayed and cried out to God. She trusted the calling on his life and the power of God that, that operated in his life. And it said that uh, in verse 22, then she called to her husband and said, please send me one of the young men, one of our workers, and one of the donkeys that I may run to the man of God and come back. She was going to go get Elisha now. So her husband said, why are you going to him today? It is neither the new moon nor the Sabbath. In other words, it's not Sunday. What are you going to see the preacher for? Amen. Can I tell you, you can't wait till Sunday for a breakthrough. You can't wait till Wednesday night Bible study. Come on, somebody, to pray. When you need a breakthrough, you need it right then. When you need to call on God, you need it right then. You can't always wait till everything lines up. Good God, I feel something. You can't always wait for things to line up picture perfect for you. When you need a breakthrough, you need to call on the name above all names where you are right then. I don't care if you're in Walmart parking lot. 
if you're on the grocery aisle, if you're working on the machine, if you're out in the yard doing yard work, when you need a breakthrough, you need to call on the man of God, call on the name of above all names, whatever you need to do, get a prayer partner on the line, whatever you need to do, amen, a breakthrough doesn't always have to be held up by scheduling and circumstances, amen, amen. and so he says, why are you going? It's neither new moon nor the Sabbath. And she said, it is well. In other words, I don't have time to tell you everything that's going on. She doesn't even tell her husband that their son is dead. She doesn't even tell her husband that she's laying him in the bed of Elisha, where Elisha lodges at times. She just says, it is well. In other words, I don't have time, honey, to tell you everything that's going on. All I can tell you, though, is it is well. It's going to be all right. Then it says in verse 24, she sat on a donkey and said to her servant, drive. I have preached this story up and down since I started preaching years ago. And really, when we see her say drive, you see the tenacity and the ambition and the seriousness of this woman. In other words, I don't have time to mess around. I need you to roll. Amen. And so she says, drive and go forward. Do not slacken the pace for me unless I tell you. In other words, put the pedal to the metal, son. We got to roll. Amen. I know some mamas out there that you don't care if it's prim and proper. When you need to get a breakthrough for your baby, you will come on somebody. You will do what you have to do. You will go where you have to go. If you've got to get up in the middle of the night and go look for them and see where they're at and what they're doing, you will do what you have to do. Amen. You don't care if you run a few stoplights. That's not very safe. Amen. Excuse me, Brother Eddie. He's a former highway patrolman. I try to behave myself when I'm around him. Amen. But at the same time, you've got to get a breakthrough for your child. Amen. Amen. She says, drive. Go forward. Do not slacken. In other words, don't slow down. And so she departed and went to the man of God at Mount Carmel. So it was when the man of God saw her afar off that he said to his servant, Gehazi, look. The Shunammite woman, he could tell something was wrong. He says, please run to her now, meet with her, and ask her, is it well with you? Is it well with your husband? Is it well with the child? And guess what she said? It is well. It is well. In the midst of desperately needing a breakthrough, she still says, it is well. And Elisha sends Gehazi, his servant, up ahead to see about the boy. But the Shunammite woman stays with Elisha and insists that he come. And he does. Then he revives the boy back to life. She wouldn't take anything else for an answer. She insisted that Elisha come. And he does. And we know the story. He spreads himself out upon the boy. He breathes upon the boy. His eyes are on his eyes. His mouth to his mouth. His hands are stretched out. And life comes back. He has to take a break for a minute. He gets up, paces around the room, cries out to God one more time, stretches out upon the boy one last time, and the boy is brought back to life. But in the midst of her having to travel to go get him, go get Elisha, the boy is dead the whole time. Her blessing, her promise is lifeless, but she had faith in what God could do. Amen? Amen? She had faith. How uncomfortable and exhausting the stress of knowing that her child had passed away must have been. But she laid him in a place she had prepared for the man of God who prophesied to her that she had this child despite being barren for so long. She was able to say it as well because she knew the same God that had made a way for her to have this child could bring him back to life as well. Amen. Can you know right now that the same God you cried out to for the miracle you received way back when is the same one that can bring it back to you now if you lost it? The same God that gave you the blessing of a lifetime, if that blessing is lifeless, if that blessing has grown dormant, God can resurrect it and bring it back. Amen? Amen? She honored the calling in the life of the man of God because she knew that God had called him. Her faith kicked into overdrive in the midst of heartache. You see, a lot of times in heartache, 
People get heartbroken, and when they get broken, they fall, they crumble, they put blankets over the windows, they stay in the house for a week at a time, they don't answer the phone, they feel sorry for themselves, and the demonic spirit of depression invades their life and holds them down in a chokehold that they can't even function anymore. But you have got to be like the Shunammite that says, even though my blessing has died, even though my problem, my promise is is lifeless right now. It is well with my soul because the same God that brought me through last time is going to bring me through this time. Can I get a witness in the house? The same God that raised him up last time will raise him up again. Amen. You can't give up. You can't give up. You have. It's a, my pastor used to say it's okay to give out, but it's never okay to give up. And that's the way we have to think about it. Listen, when you're faced with a crisis, are you going to panic or are you going to push? Are you going to panic or are you going to push? Somebody uh, abbreviated the word push one time and put periods in between each letter. And it stood for pray until something happens. And that is what we have to do in a time like this. Come on, somebody. There's a lot of people. I've had people ask me, and I was, man, I'm so thankful for everybody that reaches out to me. But I've had people in my church send cards, send me texts, leave me voicemails saying, Pastor, how are you doing in this time right now? How are you doing? This has to be stressful for a pastor to not be able to open up his church. It was at the beginning, but I had to trust God. Can I tell you, this church is fine. God's making a, he's made a way. We haven't stopped preaching. We haven't stopped praising. We haven't start, uh, stopped uh, uh, planning new series to preach. We haven't stopped learning new songs for this praise team to minister. We're online now more than we ever have been. Amen. Come on, somebody. I know it's a crisis, and I'm respectful for everything that's going on. I know people have passed away during this. I know that people are infected with this uh, this virus. I know that people have lost jobs. I know all of this, but can I tell you, I'm going, amen, thank you for thinking of me. I appreciate it, but God's got his hand on this preacher. We're doing fine. Christian Fellowship Church is doing fine, amen, because it is well with our soul. This all belongs to him. None of it's mine. It all belongs to him. And when it's all about him, he's not going to let it fall. He's not going to let it fail. He's not going to let it falter. He's not going to let it be overwhelmed. He's not going to let it drown. Amen? Hallelujah. I just wanted to tell you that tonight. Are you going to panic when you're faced with crisis? Or are you going to push? In 1 Samuel, Hannah, a lady named Hannah, made the sacrifice of a lifetime by giving up her firstborn. To the full-time service of God. She made a deal with God. She was barren. And she wanted so much to have a child. And so she did. But God said, if I give you this child, you're going to have to hand him over to me after he's weaned off of milk. So she nursed him until he was weaned off milk. And as soon as he was weaned off milk, she took him to the temple where he lived. And the priest had to raise him up. Each year she got to go and see him when she went to the temple to make sacrifices and she had made him a coat each year. Can you imagine how, how she looked forward to that trip and she would get to see that her child had grown another year, another year. It was uncomfortable being without him. But do you know who that child would grow up to be? The prophet Samuel. The prophet Samuel that would be the last in a line of judges of Israel. There would be the one that would go out and anoint Israel's greatest earthly king, King David, a man after God's own heart. The thought of having to hand over her miraculous firstborn to the church after being barren for so long was terribly difficult for her, but she trusted God completely, and he blessed her with more children. She had way, a lot more children after that. Her firstborn grew to be a great man of God. Jesus had a Samaritan mother of a demon-possessed girl relentlessly pursue him in order to get a breakthrough for her daughter. You ever heard that story? The disciples made it awkward. 
And Jesus even tested her faith by calling out the unfair racial treatment of that time and of that culture, which did not stop her from pressing in. Amen? It didn't stop her. He quoted what society's culture thought and said of her at that time to see if she would accept it and allow it to set her back, allow it to defeat her. But instead, she responded with a statement of persevering faith that Jesus blessed. What am I saying here? In that time, Samaritans were racially persecuted by Jews. And so Jews would call them dogs. And it was a racially insensitive, a racially hateful remark. Racism of any kind is evil and it's hateful. Amen? And Jesus calls it out of that day to see, because a lot of people have looked at this before and they have an issue with it, whether they admit it or not. Why is Jesus saying that it's not meant to give the bread to the dogs that's meant for the children? He was wanting to see if she would settle for society's hateful label. Martin Luther King Jr. one time said, it's not what they call you, it's what you respond to. It's what you answer to. Amen? We can be in, uh, will you allow unfair circumstances? Because it was not fair for them to call her a dog. Will you allow unfair circumstances to block you from your breakthrough? When Jesus tested her in that way, guess what she said? She said, yes, but even the dogs get the crumbs from the master's table. In other words, I'll be whatever society wants to call me. The bottom line is right now, I'm not worried about all that. I'm not, I don't care what people think of me. I don't care what people say about me. I need a breakthrough for my daughter. I'll be uncomfortable around your disciples that want me to be quiet and go away. I'll be uncomfortable in a, in a, in a land that, that labels me something less than I am. But hey, at the end of the day, I know who I am. I'm that child's mother, and I've got to go to bat for my daughter. And most importantly, I know who you are, Jesus. And I know that your crumbs off your table is more than enough to get my daughter what she needs. Jesus is so blessed by her response. He says, go to your daughter. She's fine right now. Your faith has made her well. Amen. Hallelujah. No matter how uncomfortable or awkward a situation can be when you need a breakthrough, come on somebody. No matter how it has to happen, you got to get it. Amen. I'm talking about an uncomfortable revival and we're looking tonight at mothers who went through something uncomfortable but got a breakthrough for their child. Amen. Hallelujah. As I begin to close, the tenacious, persevering, and determined faith of all of these incredibly ambitious mothers to keep pressing through for revival, even when it's uncomfortable, should inspire us tonight that even in the midst of the uncommon, even in the midst of the inconvenient, even in the midst of being uncomfortable, still push for revival. Amen? Amen? We can have revival right now. Don't get complacent. Don't get lukewarm. Don't get away from the word of God. Don't get away from prayer. And don't get away from the church. If you're online tonight and you go to another church and your church is having things online or in a parking lot, support that church. Amen. But no matter what, stay connected. Stay connected to the main line of Jesus Christ. Don't forsake him in any way, shape, or form. You can have an uncomfortable revival, but nevertheless, it's still a revival. Amen? And no matter what you're going through, say it is well. Well, Pastor, I don't feel like it is well. I'm going through this. I'm going through that. It's not well. It wasn't well for her either. Her baby had just died. But there's a trust. It doesn't mean that you're masking things. It doesn't mean that you're hiding. It doesn't mean that you're trying to portray things are good when they're not. But it does mean you completely trust God. It does mean that no matter what the situation looks like, I know who the God of it is. No matter what the situation of it is, my God is greater than that. Come on, somebody. God is greater than any disease, any virus, any pandemic, any plague. Any pestilence, God is greater. God is greater. Father, in Jesus' name, I ask right now that every person watching online tonight would realize that you are bigger than what they're facing. 
that whatever is against them, Lord God, they need to remember tonight that they are on the winning side. And if you be for them, it does not even matter what is against them. Lord God, let them be reminded tonight that the weapons may form, but they will not prosper. They shall not prosper. God, we thank you tonight for your energizing word. We thank you tonight that as your children, blood bought and born again, redeemed, saved, sanctified, filled with your Holy Spirit and on our way to heaven, that we too, in any situation, can still say with great confidence and blessed assurance that it is well. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. I hope you enjoyed that tonight. We'll have another uh, uncomfortable revival message for you, brand new one, this Sunday at 10 a.m. At this time, we're going to have the prayer request that's been collected online tonight, as well as those that's been called in. If you have a prayer request, uh, we're not taking them online anymore on this broadcast, but you can call our prayer line at 252-206-6969, and you can text your prayer request there, and we will add it to our list. At this time, Billy Joe Hopkins, our missions director, who also heads up our prayer list. She's going to come and read these. Then Brother Eddie, our men's minister, is going to pray over these. And I'm going to go get ready for baptism. Amen? Amen. All right. Thank you, Billy Joe. Bless you. Okay, so our prayer request tonight, we have Donna Mayo. She has two masses on her brain and lung. She's in Biden Hospital right now. We need to keep the family of Jennifer Marie Hennett sweetly in our prayers. She passed away. And then we have Kay Bendrum. She, was in, um, she has been in the hospital um, seriously ill, but there was a wreck Sunday. Her children were in it, and the youngest child's neck was broken. And at this time, the child is unable to move arms or legs at this time right now. So definitely need to be praying for a miracle to take place in this whole family. If you really listen to what Pastor had to say tonight, he preached our prayer. He preached our prayer. We just have to. We just have to sink in with everything that we have all our mind our soul everything that all, all our whole being we got to sink in and press in for these things to happen for us as we read these and we pray for these let's believe with all our hearts and with all our souls that god is a way maker, a miracle work in God, and He can fix these and just a, just a, just with a word. So let's pray. Father God, we just lift you up, Father. What an awesome God you are. Lord, we love you so much, Father. God, you are a miracle working God. Jesus, you rose from the dead. Your spirit dwells in us. Father, and we, just, and we believe that with everything that we are because we've seen too many things. There's been too much evidence to prove that you are. In our eyes, we've seen it. In our ears, we hear it. In our noses, we smell it. In our mouths, we taste it. And Father God, we just lift up every single person on this list tonight. Father, Donya Mayo, the two masses, Father, it please, God, in the name of Jesus, we ask that you will just remove these masses from her, Father. Give her peace during this time, Lord. Father God, Jennifer Marie Hennett, the family of her, the Father, that passed, um, she passed away, God, just uh, comfort her family. Lord, just be with them. Envelop them with your love. And Father, uh, Miss Bendrum, Miss Kay Bendrum, seriously ill, 
And now her, the child of hers has been involved in an accident. And Father, it looks like it's the quadriplegic. But God, you can touch this child. Father, you can fix this, Father. Lord, you are a miracle working God and we believe you can do it. And Father, as pastor prayed, God, I just lift these people up that have the need, anybody that has a need, whether it be for your marriage, health, uh, other relationships, Father. God, that we can honestly say it is well. It is well. And Father, I just thank you, God, again for your love, your grace, and your mercy. Lord, as we go from here tonight, Father, just watch over us, keep us, and protect us. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for praying over those requests tonight, Brother Eddie. And thank you for sending in those requests as well. Again, if you have uh, some prayer requests tonight, you weren't able to put them in the chat there and put them in the comment, you can send, you can text it to 252-206-6969. That's 252-206-6969. 6969. Amen. Again, we thank you for uh, watching tonight. I hope you enjoy the message and the music. Tomorrow night, we're postponing the Live and Unplugged from Holy Grounds Cafe. We'll have it next week, I promise you, with more music. And we will be back in the parking lot at 10 a.m. for Tailgate Church this Sunday, which will feature some seating out there as well. Right now, we're getting ready to end with another baptism. Three weeks in a row. We've baptized the people of God. This is Carlos. Somebody say, hey, Carlos. Hey. Amen. And Carlos, this is, this is also what I'm about to tell you. Carlos started coming to the parking lot services since the shutdown. Uh, for some great members of our church, uh, Doug and Tracy Daniels, brought him, and he enjoyed it, and... God touched his heart and gave his heart to Jesus or he rededicated his life. He messaged me because I did say, I said, if you want to be baptized, message me on Facebook. And he did. And he says, I know that I'm saved and I want to be uh, baptized in the name of Jesus. And so, Carlos, how old are you? I'm 17. 17 years old. What a wonderful age. The age of accountability. Are you in high school still? Yes, sir. You are? Yes, sir. All right, what grade are you in? I'm in 11. Back up. All right, all right. So we're going to believe that you're going to have a good graduation, and yes, we're really yes, praying uh, for the kids of 2020 yes, that don't get to have that graduation. Uh, my heart breaks for them, uh, but we know that God's got them in in His hands. But what a mighty witness! So you're going from junior year to senior year as a man of God. Young man of God. Amen. So I want to thank Tracy and Doug for bringing them to church. Thank you for being a witness and bringing them to church. And look at the fruit of this. On live, internet, all over the world. We've got people uh, from the Philippines to, um, what have I got people from? we got Africa, everybody watching. Pakistan, that's right. we got a lot of folks from Pakistan watching. Amen. So the whole world is watching Carlos uh, get baptized tonight. So Carlos, we're proud of you. We're here for you. You've got a church family now. And even more importantly, you've got the family of Jesus Christ. And we've got your back. Uh, you need us. We've got some great things here you can get involved in that we'll tell you about. And don't leave tonight. We've got a Bible for you. I've got some Bibles in a box back there. So we're going to give you a Bible too. All right? All right. So Carlos, we're going to get ready to baptize you. When you go down in this very warm water, um, you can pull right up with that handrail and bring yourself right up. I don't want you to worry about a single thing because I'm a professional. <laughs> Amen? All right. Carlos, we'll get ready to baptize you, brother. And before we do, we're going to pray over you tonight. Amen? Father, I just pray right now for my young brother. And I thank you, Lord God, that at 17 years old, he's made a decision that a lot of people don't make at 17. But God, was so thankful that Carlos has. Yes, We're so thankful, Lord God, that Carlos has welcomed you into his heart mm -hmm. and into his life. We're so thankful that Carlos' name is written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. We're so thankful that Carlos is saved and on his way to heaven. Yes. We're so thankful tonight that he's chosen 
to do an outward sign of an inward commitment. Yes. That this is his public witness to say, I have chosen to make Jesus Christ Lord and Savior of my life. And so we thank you tonight that he's chosen to be baptized in water. For we know that baptism does not save us, but it is our public proclamation that says we are saved. And we know who we are. And more importantly, we know whose we are in the name of Jesus. Amen. Again, all right, here we go. We're getting ready to baptize you. You ready? Carlos, I baptize you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Ghost, I baptize you. Amen. You got to preach. Hallelujah. Come and have your steps. Hallelujah. Tell somebody tomorrow, or even as early as tonight, that you witnessed water baptism, another person that's given their heart to Christ, and they've been baptized tonight. We'll uh, postpone tomorrow night till next Thursday, and we'll see you for Tailgate Church at 10 o'clock. On Sunday, bring somebody with you like Doug and Tracy did. Amen. Amen. They give their heart to Jesus. We're ready to baptize. Amen. And if you're out there and been watching this online and you know that Jesus is your Lord and Savior, or you need somebody to pray with you and pray that prayer with you, we're happy to do it for you. Amen. In fact, let's do it together right now for anybody that's watching tonight and you don't know Jesus is your Lord and Savior. Let's pray this. Father, I ask you into my heart right now. Thank you, Lord. Forgive me of my sins. I thank you for going to the cross for me. I do declare today that I am a new creation, that I am a saved person on my way to heaven. In Jesus' holy name, amen. amen. If you just prayed that prayer, you message our Facebook page just like Carlos did and say, I, I'm saved. And I want to be baptized. And we'll baptize you next week. Guaranteed. Amen. We'll fill this pool up every single week. Amen. Thank you for tuning in tonight. I'm Pastor Daniel Parker. Christian Fellowship Church. We are all about him. We'll see you Sunday in the parking lot. God bless you. Yep. All right.